Hello and welcome to my channel. Now, before we get into this tutorial, have a look at this. <laughs> I'm going to show you how you can create your own version of that in Photo Director. And all you'll need is three stone textures, one of those selfies you've got on your mobile phone there, and of course, this tutorial. Come on, let's have a look. Let's go! Tips and tricks. Of course, there's tips and tricks. Come on, let's get into it. <laughs> So I've opened up Photo Director here. I'm in the Expert module, which is the top left here, this blue, it says Expert. Now, instead of bringing in our photographs, dragging them in and dropping them in or hiding them to layers, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring them all in into a library here. So on the top right hand side here, where it says Organize and Adjust, click this once and click on Library. And now we're in the Library section, we can import all our textures and our photos in here. So Import photo, go to it, local drive. Here's my three textures and this photograph, this selfie. I'm going to click on open. So select them all. Make sure they've all got a tick above them and import them. You can select them all here and import. And now we can see better what textures are. This is a lovely cracked stone texture. And then we've got this one, this red stone with the, with the cracks in it. Absolutely nice. And then we've got this water damage one as well texture, which is really cool. And then, of course, we've got this absolutely gorgeous selfie. <laughs> but we need to cut this. Now I'm going to show you a very cool way to cut this so you don't have to actually save it, it does it automatic for you. So make sure this is selected. Go to the top right where it says Edit and click on Expert. Now it's going to ask you if you want a background layer. We're going to click for, for the moment, we're going to click No. So just select No and go in here like this. Now go to the top right and in the Tools here where it says Crop and Straighten, click this once and, and there's a little yellow padlock just underneath. Make sure that's deselected. We don't want that. And all we're going to do is just going to dr drag the right and left sides inwards. Now, I'm going to crop them just over the shoulders because usually stone busts don't really have shoulders so much. So let's just drag these in like this. Something about there. That is pretty nice. That is looking good. Um, it's I'm happy with that. Now, just at the bottom right hand side here, you'll see where my mouse is. You'll see these acceptance, yes and no, click OK. There's nothing else, it's just this. So click on this and we've accepted it and it comes back up and we've got this really nice picture. Now go to the top right where it says organize and adjust and go back into your library. And it will say, do you want to add it to your library? We're going to click yes. And there we go, it's added it to your library. But better yet, it's actually added it to your file where these pictures are. So let me show you quickly that. Open up with this, go to pictures. I'm in photo director here, project testing, and there you go, there's your edited JPEG file. Sorry, ping file, PNG, um, ready and waiting for you. So if you make a mistake, it's already there for you. You've, we've not saved anything, it's done it automatic. Very, very cool, very handy. So now we can delete the original, we don't need that. Right click, click on delete, remove from library, don't click remove from hard drive, <laughs> you'll have a bad day, it's gone forever. Just remove from library and done. Make sure we've got our picture selected like this and go back into edit and back into expert and when it asks you for the background layer, this time we're going to click yes. And there we go, we get this lovely background and this border, absolutely brilliant. Now I'm going to change this layer, this solid colour on the left here, I'm going to double click it and type in background like so. So um, I like to rename my, t my layers so I know where I am. Now this is the, uh, the main one. I'm not going to change its name. I'm not going to do anything with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and you see this menu this here. There's two ways to get this menu. You can right click or we can click on it and click on this top one here. This one. It's the exact same menu. I prefer just to right click. It makes it good and click on duplicate now there's no keyboard shortcut so it's just duplicate and now we're going to double click this and change this to something more suitable i'm going to type in my face here's my face like so and i'm going to deselect this so it's not visible anymore i'm going to leave it here anyway just in case so this is my face is now selected and what we need to do is of course we need to turn it into stone and to do that we need to get rid of the color so right click on the my face go all the way down where it says adjust there's no keyboard shortcut for this either go and click on adjust we get this window and here on the, in the tone click on saturation drag it all the way to the left 
make it black and white click OK nice black and white picture pretty sweet now what we need to do is we need to change the eyes and make turn them into stone because they don't have eyes and also the skin texture we need to blur that a little bit because stone don't really have a lot of skin texture they're kind of smooth we also need to lighten up the shirt to make that so it's a little bit lighter because that's too dark now and we need to lighten up the airs now i've got some brezhnev eyebrows sporting at the moment <laughs> just gonna get rid of those a little bit later and um, we need to lighten those up and the and my hair we need to lighten this a lot and then we need to blur them as well because hairs are not usually in stone busts so let's do the eyes first let's make the eyes into stone so click on above the picture on the zoom tool here click it once to select it i'm going to click two three times so we we'll get right into the eyes like this click on the zoom tool again to deselect it now what we're going to do is we're going to select the eyes so go on the right hand side of the tools menu and the third one down is the select area tool and i'm going to go all the way down where it says lasso selection i'm going to keep going down and here you'll see it says manual brush selection i'm going to click this once and just underneath that you'll see this mode and you'll see this box with the with the plus sign in it make sure this is selected because that's what we're after because every time because we're doing eyes so if we'll do this eye and then do this eye we don't need to click because it, it, it will just add them together with that so make sure your brush size fits inside the eye and inside the cornea right there without actually touching the eyelids because we don't want to touch the eyelids we want to just take the eyes so mine's at set 25 percent, which is perfect here the feathers at one don't go anymore with the feather um, it it doesn't look good and all i'm going to do is i'm going to click my left mouse button hold and just drag around without actually touching the eyelids like so and go all the way around it like this and with the cornea selected there we go and because we've got this plus sign selected we can just carry on here with the next eye and go all the way here like this you don't have to be really truly precise you just need to get the eyes really out of the way like that'll do so now we've got the red eyes go to the zoom tool at the top click it once right click a couple of times to zoom out click the zoom tool again just to make sure it's deselected so we don't have it so now we've got this we need to turn them into stone to do that we need the gradient tool so on the right hand side in the tools here's the gradient tool right in the middle in click it once red eyes have gone but the selection is has stayed now here on the right hand side you see it says color we've got the we need the black for this to set the foreground color and white for the background color and all you need to do is click and drag up from the bottom upwards like this you can do it on this eye this eye we can do it on the nose i'm going to do mine right here on the nose drag it up like this and then let it go and there you go stone eyes now you can move these little markers around if yours doesn't look nice and this this makes it more dark if you drag it up makes it lighter you drag it down and vice versa with the top one actually that looks pretty neat for me I, i'm quite happy with that i'm going to click on my brush tool on the right hand side so that deselects it Control d on the keyboard and there we go we have now got stone eyes so the next port of call of course is we need to lighten the the airs here and the shirt so now we've got our brush selected here before we do anything else with this actually i'm going to cut this out so it makes it a lot easier so while this is still selected i'm going to go back up here to my select area tool and here on the auto object selection this little button here just click it once and there you go it makes a perfect cutout like this so while it is selected now go to the where the layers are go to the very top you see a white box with a black circle this is add mask just click the mask and now we've made our mask which is wonderful we don't need to do anything else with this now all we need to do now is invert this so we can go here on this operation on the right hand side and here you see the two arrows it says invert selection do that and then click on the scissors at the side of it or just press delete on your keyboard it doesn't really matter which and just delete and there you go Control d to deselect it and there we are we've got our nice cutout so let's now lighten up the shirt so let's go back into our brush selection here right click on the mask 
select a masked area here and you get the ants going around it now make sure we click on our picture not the mask we've still got the selection but we're on the picture here's our brush we've got a size of 276 which is quite big we've got normal blending mode and we've got color change the color here and we're going to change it to white click OK. We've got the opacity at 30% and the colour is white and a blending mode normal. And all you need to do then is just paint on the shirt. Now try to avoid the skin because it, it causes problems. It, so just avoid it. So click your, your left mouse button, hold it down and just start painting around the shirt like this without actually touching the skin. You don't need to be absolutely perfectly precise. Don't worry about it. All we need to do is, is just make it a little bit lighter because it's the shirt's too dark. Now, of course, if you've got a light shirt on, you obviously you won't need to do this. Mine's got a darker color, so I'm going to change this out like so. That is cool. Now we're going to do the eyebrows. Now this brush size is way too big for the eyebrows. So we're going to drop the brush size right down and just mark it across so you can see it. So it just covers the eyebrows. Now you can do it in one, one movement from in to out and just go left to right like once, like that. That's it. And do exactly the same on the opposite side. Perfect. If it looks a little bit strange, then it's strange. So Control Z on your keyboard, go back, drop the opacity down to 25 or 20% 20 and do it again and see what happens. See, that's looking a bit better since I dropped it down. Now to get the brush size to the air size, we want to increase it a little bit. We get about 140, 165, Ooh, 165, absolutely. It's on the money. And all we do is we just go around and just color the air. Don't let go of your mouse button. Just change it. Try not to touch the skin in any way and just lighten the hair. Now, of course, if you don't have any hair, then this is not going to be a problem. You don't really need to do this. And we're good. We've actually lightened everything up just as we need it. And that is fine. I'm going to click on another button. I'm going to click Control D on my keyboard to deselect it. Now, the next thing, of course, we need to do is we need to blur it. The, the, the skin texture needs to disappear a little bit and um, and we need to blend in the air follicles we, we, you don't have air follicles on stone busts so while this picture is still selected go over to the right hand side and we're going to choose this guided tools it's this little magic wand tool here and in the photo effects folder here in the photo effects file area we've got blur tools go to blur tools now this is a strange blur tools is strange it, it blurs it a little bit and then it comes back out now what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the zoom tool and i'm just going to zoom in a few p let's go let's go one more like that click on the zoom tool again to deselect it and now we get this little window open that we can just move around so we don't need to keep choosing the mouse the, the hand tool we can just use this automatically so this is very cool. Now I'm going to just move this up so we can do the hair, do the hair first. Now we're using a blur tap and left hand side we're using a soft focus. We've got a blur degree of about 30, which is pretty pretty cool. Now you've got the two brushes to choose from. This one on the left is the erase effect, and this one is the restore effect. So I'm going to click on restore effect brush size. We've got it at 20. It's feathered to 80 and we've got a strength at 100. I'm going to drop the strength down to 25. Even though our blur degree is at 30, this needs to come down as well. So now you can see the size of the brush here. I'm going to click once on the picture and it will blur the whole picture like so. See, it's blurred it all once. Click on reset and then go back in again. And now we can blur it. So click and drag along and just blur out those airs like so now it's easier actually when you're doing this to click and move click and move so, but here on this on my on the head on my head we're just going to blur just keep dragging pieces like this just to get rid of a lot of the hair follicles we don't actually need to see them that's looking pretty neat. Now I'm going to drag this down a bit because I want to be get the skin texture. So now the skin texture is looking good. Now the best thing to do this with this, of course, is increase the size to 30, somewhere around 30. This is what this is the size we, we're looking at, and just click once and then move your mouse button. So for the skin texture, so I'm going to go one, two, three, 
four like this and it just it just blurs out the skin texture so keep doing it several times like this it's it makes it a much easier way to do it so you don't go overboard and and then because if you drag you can see that you've dragged it and it, it just it just doesn't work nice so i i prefer a much a much more logical way to do it like this click move click move and blend it in like that now the eyes are looking really sharp and we don't need them to be that sharp so click on the eyelashes now or the other eyelids and do the same again one two three four five one two three four five and have a look and and, and just see for yourself is it have i gone too far or is it not far enough you just need to remove detail, basically. Like so. That is looking much better. I actually think that is pretty close to what I want. I'm not really going to do the tip of the nose. I'm going to just a few pieces like this. And then around the forehead a little bit. Just to remove some of the detail. Now, if you if you if you're not seeing it, and of course, increase the strength a little bit. But for me, uh, this is this is working pretty neat. I, I'm I'm happy with this. Now, the mouth, of course, we need to blur this as well because this is really sharp. So we're going to do in, inside the mouth. Do it two or three times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and there we go. It kind of seals it, which you know you don't have that line there. I'm going to click on OK. I'm happy with what I've done here. And there we go. We've made it very nice. It's, it's black and white, and it's kind of smoothed it out. So now we need to bring in our texture, which, of course, is the stone texture that we're going to be using for this. So while this is selected, the My Face layer is selected. Go to above it, and you'll see this little Add New Layer marker here. Click this once. Go down to add photo layer from the library because we've already got them in the library waiting for us. Now I'm going to use this crack stone. Now I've named my files these already. So when I bring these in now to the editing area, it's already named this layer for me. I don't need to rename this layer. But if you haven't done that, then I highly recommend you name the layer something so you know you know what it is, what you're doing here. Now I like this texture i like these cracks and i want these cracks to be up to appear on on this picture now i'm going to go to the top right hand corner here and my mouse changes over and i'm just going to rotate it like so now i'm going to drag this down like this just for the moment and then i'm going to move it and the reason i'm doing this is because if the file if this has gone above or below your viewport there's no sc scrolling sliders here you can't do anything you have to move it so i'm just gonna so make it smaller first so you get it in in, in where you want it and then just change these out now you can't change the opacity or anything like that until we click on this button here so just leave that for the moment i'm going to just drag them around like this a little bit like that i'm going to drag this down there that's looking good i'm going to click yes now i can change my opacity slider and see where everything is so you can see it a lot better and then we can change it with the corners and sides again so this is looking pretty good i like that crack there that is brilliant i like this crack that is good as well and that one and this is best because we're going to cut this out a little bit later and I'm going to show you how to make that into a broken part of this bust. So that is cool. Bring the opacity all the way back up. Now we need to add this to our picture. So the layer that we've named my face or then whatever you've named it, right click on the layer mask, select masked area and we'll get these marching ants like this. Go back to our texture that we've just brought in. And here at the top, add the mask and just click on mask. And now it's put it around our picture. And then you're saying, yeah, but it's not looking like it. And then, no, it's not. Not yet. So Control D on your keyboard. Make sure this is selected. Make sure your picture, make sure this is selected. 
and go to blending mode and change the blending mode now to multiply. And there we go. Now we have our stone texture selected. Now this is very red, so we're going to change its color. So while it's selected, right click and click on adjust. Drop the saturation down. If you go all the way down, it'll just go like that. I'm going to go to 90% and I'm going to take the temperature a little bit over to the left. Why are you doing it? It lightens it, but it makes it kind of bluish. And I'm going to add the tint across as well. I, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want it to look like concrete. I want it to look a little bit like stone. So I'm going to click OK on that now. And now you see it looks like stone. And you think, to yourself, well, it's a bit dark. It is a little bit dark. We're going to lighten that next so you can see this. And it makes it look a lot better. We don't need to do any adjustments. We're going to add a very special adjustment in here called levels. So while this is selected, go above your layers. And you see this half moon thing. Click this once. Open it up with the left mouse button and go to levels and click on level. Now, photo director levels bothers me because it actually goes to all the layers underneath, affects everything. So we need to do it here now. So while it's selected, you get this histogram here. You see this. And then underneath the histogram, you've got these three markers. So this is the darks, this is the midtones, and this is the lights. So bring the midtones and bring it to the left and it will lighten up. The, the the texture and our photograph so we don't so we have to be careful so let's brighten it up a little bit like here and then bring this right hand side one bring this in now if you go too far it spoils the, the photograph see it just ruins it so we don't want it to do that so we want to drag it in just enough to make it look like it's got a little bit of light on the stone there and then the blacks which is the left hand side bring this up and it brings back a little bit of stone detail just so i'm going to go there that is looking absolutely amazing i'm happy with that and then just in the levels here just this little arrow button you can close this up so now it's done so now we've got our stone guy already set up we need to add of course the water damage feature that we need to put on top so while the level one is selected here go to the top left add new layer add a photo layer from the library and i'm going to choose now the water damage click ok and now we've got water damage in here i'm going to check the opacity drop it down so i can see where it's going now i like this and i like this bit here as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just from the corner, drag this up like this. Now what we want to do is we want the water damage to just be around the top part of the head. We don't want it all over the place. So that is looking pretty neat. Now if I just move this around like this, see that, that is looking pretty sweet, but I'd rather it be more down here and get that and have that let's try let's try moving this up so it goes and bring this in like that and let's see what that looks like see that's got a nice effect to it i'm going to drag the top part up a little bit so i get that in there now that's looking that's got a very nice effect to it. it's got this wonderful break here got some water damage going on on this side of the head now don't worry about this little bit we're going to I'm going to show you how to get rid of that so it just it just affects this part to the mouth and this kind of area bring the opacity all the way back up top like this make sure you click on my face on the mask here layer right click select mask area so we get the marching ants go back to our water damage or whatever you've called this click on the mask and there we go now we've got our mask so make sure we click now back on the texture on it says normal here click this and click on multiply and there you go now we've got that effect absolutely amazing all we need to do now is just lighten it up because it's got a little bit dark so while it's still selected right click and go to adjustment here and then before we touch the ex exposure make sure you click on brightness and see what it looks like with brightness turned up before we do anything now i want to keep some of the orange on top of the head there and i'm going to increase the exposure just a 
touch i don't want to go too much because it get, seems to get rid of the orange and i want to keep that so i'm going to keep the lightness going to, and there i'm going to click ok and there we go now we've got this crack effect here going across the side of the face we've got these cracks we've got this lovely water damage happening here absolutely brilliant the problem is of course now we've got this little line here now i'm going to show you how to get rid of that so while we se our selection is still going around, it's still got our selection going, click on the mask here on the top layer that we've just created. Go over to our brush in the tools menu on the right hand side here, the pen tool. Make sure we're on brush. We've got the size of about 165, which is about this size. This is pretty neat. Now I'm going to opacity is at 20%. Sometimes this you might need to drop this down if you're taking too much out. Make sure your color is black. And all we need to do then is just paint off and on inside like this around where that line is. Take it away a little bit from the mouth as well. We don't need all that in there. We could take some of the ear away as well. We don't want that little bit. And just gently take away some of this now you can drop the expo the opacity down a little bit more i'm going to go down to 13 just to give it so it it doesn't look very harsh and just gently like this take away and there we go Control d on our keyboard and there we have our absolutely perfect stone bust picture now something's missing and of course, it's looking very two-dimensional and we need to drop in a little shadow on this. So while we've got this layer selected, go to the top here, add a new layer and add an empty layer. Change this name to shadow. Shadow. So while this is selected, right click here on my face. Select the masked area. Go back to shadow, make sure it's selected. We're going to click on our brush here, click on the pen tool, We're pen selected, make sure our color is black, click OK. And all we're going to do is we're just going to paint around where we would like it to have a shadow. Now I'm going to increase the size a little bit, I don't want to, and the opacity, I'm going to bring up to about 25%. Now we don't, you, you can play around this, try it one time first on, on, on part of the shirt so you can see, I'm going to paint now and see, it's got this if you go too dark it looks really strange and if you, if it's not dark enough it, it, it you can see it looks it doesn't look good either so i'm going to press ctrl z on my keyboard just to get rid of that bit make sure we click back on our shadow click on our pen tool i'm going to increase the opacity to 30 percent and we're going to paint just start touching inside like this and just gently painting in And just gently go around the skin like this. I like to just cl click and move because if, if you dr drag it, you get this line and it, it just, it, it's not nice. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to just click and, and move my mouse around like that. And go the same on the opposite side like this. And it adds this wonderful shadowy area effect like that. And it stops it from being two-dimensional. So now we've got a nice three-dimensional. We don't need to do the hair or anything like that. It doesn't really matter. You can go and do it if you, if you so like, because it helps with the texture a little bit, I guess. Like so. And there we are. That is our shadow done and our control D on our keyboard. And there we have our now texture. Now I'm going to cut this block out here. So I'm going to go to my zoom tool here. Right click to zoom out. Deselect it. So now you can see we've got the problem here, this bit. I'm going to get rid of that. So while the shadow selected, go to the right hand side of the tools to this select area tool, the third one down. And now we're going to click here on this lasso tool. It's this one here. All it says is lasso selection. If you look at this one, it says smart. Don't do that. This is the one we're looking for. What was this one? Select by lasso selection. 
just this that's it that's the one and all i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut right underneath the shadow where this breakage is you don't need to be exact just kind of try to follow it a little bit around like this it it doesn't need to be brilliant because we're going to fill it in and i'm going to go all the way around like this and come back in and cut it right there so now we've got this selection set up already waiting for us go to the top left to the add photo layer from folder here from the library sorry and i'm going to choose my break stone click ok our stone is in i'm going to drag this down to somewhere that makes it look like yeah that is going to be very cool yeah that's good i am check the opacity that's fine and all we're going to do now is just click on mask and it masks it out for us Control d on our keyboard and there we go click on the brush tool so it deselects it and it, yeah it's not looking good because we need to color it right so so make sure you've got the texture selected right here right click and go to adjust and drop the saturation down like so now of course it's still bright and all you need to do then of course is play around with the brightness like so and the exposure drop it about somewhere there that looks good click OK and there you go it looks like it's broken away now I know you're saying yeah but there's all that extra out back yeah there is that bit there and I'm going to show you how to delete that I want to show you a very cool way to make that look like it's chipped away stone so it looks like it's sharp it's very cool effect now before we actually do that everything else is pretty much set up so we can actually save this so if you go to file and save as here make sure you're saving as a phi file here i'm going to change that to stone bust like so and save it and this saves everything here so we can come back again and mess around with these later using the hi file phi file now i want to turn this into a jpeg file so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click anywhere in these layers it doesn't matter which one we've got right click it merge which is the two thirds down here and merge all right there it'll say it's going to do all this you just click okay fine just do your thing and there you go now we have a jpeg breakstone jpeg already set up let's go here to our file add a new layer i'm going to add an empty layer i'm going to make sure that this is deselected this breakstone make sure our layer one is selected change its name to background like so and we're going to change its color so just go over here to the fill tool underneath the t right in the middle here fill tool we've got white and just click anywhere in there and there you go we've got a nice background drag this underneath our jpeg bring our jpeg back and there we go now make sure our jpeg is selected right here and now we're going to cut away all this and i'm going to show you a very cool way to do this so click on the eraser tool drop the opacity down to between 25 and 30 percent now we're using this size brush and all we need to do is just keep clicking and moving like this and go over the top of the ones that you've already done somewhere like that and then do the same on the opposite side go all the way down like this and just keep going over the top of the ones we've already done in a nice diagonal make it look something like that that'll do go back to your opacity slider and bang the opacity all the way up to 100 and then just delete it out the same way like this and now it looks like it's been clipped like it's sharp look at that and there we go and now there we have our absolutely perfect stone bust of our selfie <laughs> get a 3d printer print that out give it to your wife on your wedding anniversary she'll love you forever <laughs> and that is how to create a stone bust very very cool so did you give it a try did you come up with something really really cool <laughs> 
If you enjoyed this video tutorial and you found it informative, hit that subscribe button, click that like, or ring that bell because you'll get notified every time I upload new content. That's my rant for today. Have a great day. Stay safe, people.